Welcome to Upon This Rock. Today we're continuing a series of Through the New Testament in 2022. As you can see, I'm not where I usually am when I do these videos. Uh, it's a busy day, but I wanted to get this out on John chapter 2. Jumping into verse 1. And the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Uh, it says Jesus' mother was there, but Joseph is not mentioned. In fact, we do not see him um, since Luke 2 uh, when he and his and Mary was looking for Jesus, found him in the temple when Jesus was 12. Many assume because of this um, that Joseph had actually already died. Verse 2, And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. When they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus saith unto him, They have no wine. In the culture of this day, this was essentially uh, inadequate hospitality and was embarrassing. Verse 4, Jesus saith unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? An hour is not yet come. Barclay noted about uh, Jesus saying woman, he said, so far from being a rough and discourteous way of address, it was a title of respect. We have no way of speaking in English what exactly renders it, but it is better to translate it lady, which gives at least the courtesy in it. Uh, while calling uh, your mother woman would definitely be offensive and should not be done uh, today, this is not what he did. He did not call her mother as now his public ministry had started and his relationship with her had shifted. Uh, the term used was one that still had respect, though not disrespect, um, but it just does not translate directly. Verse 5, his mother saith unto his servants, whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. And there were set six water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece. Jesus, Jesus said unto them, fill the water pots with water, and they filled them up to the brim. Notice Jesus used the servants as part of the miracle. Of course, their actions were insufficient in of, of themselves, and the power and miracle came only through Jesus when they were obedient. No one would point here and say that the servants experienced a work-based miracle. And no one would disagree that the miracle was done by the grace of God, not by the works of the servants. And our salvation is the same way. God has laid out a plan as seen in passages such as John 3, 5 and Acts 2, 38. And we see this plan acted out by the Jews in Acts 2, the Samaritans in Acts 8, and the Gentiles in Acts 10. Their, their works have no saving power in and of themselves, but obedience to God's plan is how we receive God's gift of salvation. Just as Jesus freely performed this miracle through the obedience of his servants. But why? Because this gift is received by faith. Ephesians 2, 8 says, For by grace are ye saved through faith. Now what is truth faith? Faith that produces action. James 2, 14 says, What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? Can faith save him? Verse 16. Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Continue on verse 8. And he saith unto them, Draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast, and they bear it. And when the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, he knew not whence it was. But the servants which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom. And he said unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine. And when men had well drunken, then that which is worse, but thou hast kept the good wine until now. Of course, this is a principle when it comes to to God, the best is yet to come. Verse 11, this beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and his disciples believed on him. Perhaps by glory, it refers to the compassion Jesus showed in his miracles. Verse 12, after this, he went down to Capernaum, he and his mother and his brethren and his disciples, and they continued there not many days. And the Jews' Passover was at hand and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. And found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and the changers of money sitting. And when he had made a scourge of small cords, he drove them out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers of money and overthrew the tables. And he said unto them that sold doves, take these things hence, make not my father's house an house of merchandise. This was all taking place in the temple courts, which was the only place that Gentiles could come and pray and worship. Uh, these things that were taking place would at the least be a major distraction uh, and most likely prevented the Gentiles from coming and praying completely. Verse 17, and his disciples remembered that it was written, the zeal of thine house hath eaten me up. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, What sign showest thou unto us, seeing that thou doest these things? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, 
and in three days I will rise up. Here, Jesus is, of course, speaking of himself. And, of course, that is raise it up, not rise it up. Uh, notice here, Jesus claims he will raise himself up. But Galatians 1.1 1, 1 says the Father raised him up. And Romans 8.11, the Spirit it says the Spirit raised him up. Of course, this means two different things based on either the oneness or Trinitarian doctrine. So either the three persons of the Godhead had to work together to bring it to pass as if they of then and of themselves as individual persons are not all powerful. Or these are all simply manifestations of the one singular divine Spirit that is God. Of course, this is what Scripture teaches Colossians 2 9, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Isaiah 9 6, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. The terms child and son here being the manifestation of who? The Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. Verse 20, then said the Jews, 40 and six years was the temple in the building. And wilt thou rear it up in three days? But he spake of the temple of his body. And when therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he said he had this said this unto them, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. Now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover, in the feast day, many believed in his name when they saw the miracles which he did. But Jesus did not commit himself unto them, because he knew all men. I like the commentary of Morgan here. He said, if belief is nothing more than the admiration of the spectacular, it will create in multitudes applause, but the son of God cannot commit himself to that kind of faith. Verse 25, and he needed not that any should testify of man, for he knew what was in man. Thank you for joining Upon This Rock. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and God bless.